Welcome to Rivalries. Today I'm joined by Will Dalton. He's a presenter and reporter for Virgin Media Sports and also a Chelsea supporter. Will, it's great to have you on the All Villa No Filler podcast. Great to be here, Frankie. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, anytime. So uh, look, Chelsea are playing Aston Villa this weekend. So it's a game I'm going to. It's one that I'm uh, uncharacteristically looking forward to, I would say. Um, but how do you feel ahead of the Chelsea Villa game? Um, we've seen some bright shoots with Graham Potter over the past few games mm -hmm. uh, with still some worrying signs like the Everton game should have been three points in the bag. They're obviously all over the place. Yeah. Um, we are just nowhere near clinical in front of goal uh, that we need to be. Um, as I said, there's been some bright shoots and stuff and we'll get into it a bit more, but... I concern Villa, Villa are playing well. Uh, you know, new manager has come in. He's he's done well. He's got you organised. He's got you playing well. Uh, and you know, look where the table we are. Um, you know, we I think some of our players have one eye on the Champions League. And you know, we were only having a conversation here the other night about our Champions League campaign. I think Chelsea are very dangerous in the Champions League at the moment because mm. they don't really have an awful lot to play for in the league. You know, you could kind of say, well, if you if you put a really good run together, you might get towards fifth fourth who mm -hmm. knows because it's all over the place but um yeah so I, i'd be a bit worried at times i think if it's this if it's going forward it's the same that what we've seen over the past say six weeks eight weeks mm -hmm. i think chelsea will have some good results um bad results so i think it'll be very mixed bag in the league so it'll be down to ye uh which one you get i think right you know because yeah as you as you mentioned you know chelsea and villa are firmly mid-table at the moment and uh Burnley ensconced in the race for 10th place, as I call it. Um, that's not really where Chelsea should be, given the amount of money you've spent. So what exactly has gone wrong at Chelsea this season? Well, look, <clears throat> obviously, coming off the back of last year and the situation with Ukraine, the club was in complete turmoil. It was all over the place. And and really not for anything of you know the club's doing. Um, you know, Some people might say, well, the owner and different things like that. But that's where we were left. And to have got out of that, um, obviously, new owner came in. I think Todd has got great plans for what he wants to do. Uh, I think he would probably admit as well he's learning the process. Um, I thought the transfer window was very, very haphazard. You know, we've always had good transfer window. Well, not always, but the majority of our transfer windows have always been very planned and um, methodical and, and get, getting usually getting in, getting players early done sorts of because it's so key to get players into a club before preseason starts. Mm -hmm. If you can have, you know, 90% of your signings done by preseason, it gives you such a boost. Um, everybody gets to know each other. Everybody's on the same fitness levels, you know, relatively. Um, and, and that didn't happen. There was late signings. It was the same in January. And then also the, the, the other key factor was the players didn't go out the door. Mm. Um, there's far too big a squad there uh, with players uh, that shouldn't be there anymore, you know, and whether that is they're not good enough or whether, you know, naturally a, a player's time has come to the end uh, at the club for form, for, you know, sometimes players get a bit stale. They need a move to rejuvenate themselves as well. So that's been a big, um, a big, you know, downfall of this season. I think. I think once we get to the summer and we're able to move some players on, I think the the new players that we have signed, and I think there are some very good young players in there mm -hmm. um, with great potential that they will develop. I think Potter as well. You know, look, he was very unlucky with injuries. He had an incredibly shocking injury list, yeah. which again, the physio department. We've always had a very very good physio stroke medical department. This year, it's not been the same. There have been changes. Whether those changes have been right or wrong, well, we can look at the injury list, and that, I think, gives us the evidence that seriously needs to be sorted. Um, uh, and that was that that kind of stopped you looking at Graham Potter's record overall to say, right, where is he? Um, but obviously, when you have defeat after defeat, home defeats, you're not, and you're not even playing well. We weren't creating goals. Um, Questions were going to be asked. Now, players have come back. You know, he's got important defenders back, midfielders back. Um, you kind of, and the signings that were, have been made, you've kind of got, right, we need to see something now. Now, we've got, what, three wins in a draw in the last four. So you'd like to think that's turning the corner. You know, the win against Leeds, 
again, I was like, we've won, but apart from that goal, we've done nothing else mm. new from the last game. Thankfully, Chilwell and James are back, and you can't underestimate how big those two players are, not just to the team, but to the system that Chelsea can use and essentially destroy teams with. Those two players are, in my eyes, the best in their positions, I think, in the world at the moment. James is just, you know, he brings so much strength and determination, even as a character, steel into the team. Mm. Chilwell will cause havoc up front when he's a left wing back. And with those two players, then I think that's the perfect system for us. We have enough central defenders, good central defenders to play that three at the back. And then, you know, to talk about then this team not having N'Golo Kante, in my eyes, probably the best player I've ever seen live. Again, really? hugely okay. underestimated by people that until you see Kante live and what he does it is just incredible and you can yeah, talk about great. Ronaldo's and Messi's yes 100% agree but they'll grab the headlines because of their goal scoring race yeah. Kante just it is essentially people have said it before and it's so true it is like having two players in the mm-hmm. team you know, you know as Chelsea fans we are also hopeful that when he is back as far as I know he played um, a behind the closed door match against Charlton uh, during the international break. So last week uh, came through that. I think he played sixty minutes, if I'm right. Don't hold me to that. But again, it, it, that will be such a major, major boost. And then being able to rotate Kovacic, Fernandez, and Kante. Those three will, for me will fill two positions. And at today's game, when you've so many games and you've such intensity and the Champions League. That's the ideal, uh, sorry, I, ideal dream scenario for Graham Potter. Uh, but the final thing then is, is to try and get the striker scoring. Jeff Felix has looked very, very good. Looks like we will want to sign him. Looks like he wants to say. But you need more from Kai Havertz. We've seen little bits now in the past couple of games, maybe, that he's beginning to get confidence back. And you just need an edge from him. Sometimes he looks a bit, I don't I don't want to say sedated, but it's like, come on, like get stuck in really a bit more. So that's kind of what we're hoping for really over the next, the Villa game and then going forward. Okay. Um, I mean, as you said about Kante, I mean, I remember the first time I watched him play was for Leicester against Arsenal and he was in the season and Leicester won the league. And I remember being absolutely astonished at how good he was. And I remember me and a friend who were watching it together just being like, it, is he the best player in the world? It was, a, he was just so brilliant. Um, but, uh, but, you know, uh, we we'll look ahead to sort of this weekend, the Chelsea Villa game. How do you think specifically Chelsea can hurt Aston Villa? Well, James is a 50 50 from what I know. Obviously, he pulled out of the second England game, a hamstring injury. Again, worrying signs that we're still not managing injuries well. Um, so it's kind of like, right, well, are we going to take a chance on him uh, with obviously Champions League coming up? Perhaps not. But as I said, that that's where I see Chelsea hurting pretty much any team. That's where they will play. I don't think they'll try and hide it. I think those players are that good. And then when you have the quality of Kovacic, who scored two the other night for Croatia, very rare thing for him to do. Hopefully he brings <laughs> his score and boost back um, to Stamford Bridge. Uh, I, you know, Kante won't start, but could you could see him get some minutes, hopefully, uh, and Fernandez then as well. That they will allow those those two to get up the wings, play the passes in where they need. Um, so that's where I see danger coming from. Um, some of the new signings, Manjuke and Mudrick, yet to see the best of Mudrick. Yeah, I think we'll probably hold, um, you know, our thoughts about him until the new season. But in in flashes, he he has something. He has that X factor that you look for in a player. And now what needs to be done is develop and tease that out into to him becoming, you know, a potential superstar. But yeah, sorry, to answer your question, that's where I see the wingbacks will play a massive important role. I can't see Potter switching from the style. So I think that's the key to Chelsea. If you can shut those two down, if it's not James, we'll see who else plays there. It, it has been Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Does not feel the same um penetration I think going forward but Ben is back Ben is looks like he's 100 percent and that's a danger to any uh, opposing side yeah he's a he's a great player as well um you know Aston Villa down I think Chilwell's side so on Villa's right hand side um 
Matty Cash has been injured whilst playing for Poland, so he's going to be out three weeks, and he was in great form for Villa. Ashley Young will come in most likely. They could maybe Ezra Constant be pushed out to the right and Diego Carlos comes in. But I would say that side of the, of the pitch could be where Villa get hurt maybe. You know, Leon Bailey tends to play out there. He's not massively consistent. Um, gives the ball away every now and again. So if you can get the ball out on that side and just hit Villa, you know, Mudrick maybe going at Ashley mm. Young, that might be an area that Chelsea get some success. Um but at the same time, you know, Villa's away form has been really strong mm. under Unai Emery, you know, 2-0 against Tottenham away um, not too long ago. So uh, how do you think Villa themselves could hurt Chelsea? Well, look, I think you've got a man in form on front, haven't you? He's looking to break a record, I think, this weekend, Sully Watkins. Um, do you yeah. I think it's the first Villa player to have scored five is it successive away games or something like that. So, yeah. look... He's dangerous. Um, yeah, he's you know, I still think Ollie Watkins is a little bit more in him. Um, you know, you're almost kind of going, is he going to go to that next level? Mm. Uh, so, you know, potentially from that, we've looked a little bit weak at times from set pieces. I think if the press is there as well, um, Kepa has been very solid now for Chelsea in recent weeks, but he was part of a brutal Spanish side the other night, one of the worst <laughs> Spanish teams I've seen in years. Yeah. against Scotland and uh, no disregard to any yeah, Scottish Villa fans because Scotland were fantastic and did exactly what they needed to do um so yeah we're still we're still hoping again Kepa kind of fulfills you know what they made him a world record signing for um so there's always a little bit of a worry there and then just at times the center backs like Koulibaly for that that second goal against Everton it was just a shocker like for such an experienced player to let such an inexperienced player do that to him is a real worry. Um, on the plus side, Badashil and, and Fafana seem to be coming, Fafana especially coming into form after injury, and badashil has been a very, very good solid signing, great value, I think, for what we paid for him. Um, so defensively, you know, they, they'll have to be on their, on their, on their game to, to keep an eye on Watkins, I think. And, and then also as well, John McGinn playing for Scotland the other night. Mm. Hasn't done it for ye, I think, as much as he's been doing for the Scots. But then that's down to your manager to get the best out of him. And there's no reason why he can't be doing that. You know, is there something in the Villa setup that he's being constrained? Is he being told, no, you can't be, you need to be a little bit more disciplined where he's more freedom with Scotland? Mm. McGinn, is, McGinn has, uh, has that little uh, bit of X factor we're talking about, you know, in the team, you can create a spark out of nothing. So I, I'll be keeping an eye on John McGinn as well. Yeah, John McGinn's um, form has come so much better under Unai Emery. Um, he's getting forward much more now than he was under Steven Gerrard. Um, so I think the goal will come from him. He hasn't scored for a long time for Villa. But at the same time, you know, Bubakar Kamara, who's been a brilliant signing for us, to be honest, and while I'm surprised he's in a, you know, a Champions League club, um, he's been super this season, but he got injured against Crystal Palace. Horrible tackle on him by Cech Decore, and uh, John McGinn's kind of slotted back in there now. Um, so that sure shows Villa's squad depth isn't quite there. And this summer, I think Villa are probably going to have to go quite big. Um, so if John McGinn sits in CDM this this weekend, again, I think I think that's not Villa at their best. I think if he's able to sit out right and push forward a bit more and Kamara comes back in from injury, then I'm very, very excited to see how this game goes. So score prediction-wise, uh, Will, it's very hard to predict Chelsea this season, but uh, I'm going to ask you, put you on the spot, how do you think you'll do at Stamford Bridge this weekend? Well, usually whatever I say, the exact opposite happens. That's why. Right. I, okay. Right. So, like, if you look at our stats this season at home, it's, 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 I'll be honest, Frank, it's been a tough watch. Mm. Okay. So, I wouldn't be going to Stamford Bridge at the weekend thinking there's going to be a whole load of goals. Uh, I think there hasn't been a goal at Stamford Bridge in the opening 15 minutes. Right. As far as I can remember. Yes. Yeah, so we've had no early goals. And, the other thing I saw as well, that there's only been, I think it's 25 or 26 goals in all the Premier League games at Stamford Bridge so far this season between wow. both teams. Wow. And I think that's the lowest in the league. It has been dull, to say the least. So you're kind of thinking then, is a goal going to settle us? And then, of course, I talked to you on Sunday and it's 3-3 or something. You know? Yeah, yeah um, exactly. So, uh, I, I, look, I think it'll be tight. I think I think it will be a 1-0. A one 
Uh, as I said, I'd like, you, you know, for it to continue our progression, the the Everton game kind of knocked us back a bit again. Mm-hmm. Um, but you'd like to think coming back in off the international break, um, players ready to go again. They've had that little break from the Chelsea squad and those who weren't with their international team are ready to go. It'll be an interesting um, selection for Potter to see where players are because he'll obviously have to take into account of how many players you know have played for their country how many minutes they've done etc whereas players are just sitting in the cabin waiting to go um, it was good they had that in-house match I think and we have the likes of Kante getting some minutes uh, score prediction I don't know I'll go 2-1 Chelsea 2-1 Chelsea um, for the first time ever in my life ever for Villa against one of the top teams I'm going to be I'm going to say Villa do it. I'm going to say we carry on our good away. You don't usually do, do well at the bridge, do you? No. We're usually, it's usually at Phillip Park. We might have a little bit of trouble or there's a, a right home dinger of a game. I remember some, I think, 3-3 three, three draws and stuff between us. Yeah. And, you know, I, by that, so. I do remember an 8-0 at Stamford Bridge, so, which I'd, I'd prefer to forget. But I, uh, hopefully that Listen, doesn't happen this you week. You invited yeah. me on. I wasn't going to bring it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we've had a few bad days. I think there was a 7-1 as well, maybe, is, at some point. Um but yeah, and there was, but I think there was a, was there like a four four one time three like a last minute? Well, yeah, there is. There has been some crazy matches between. Yeah. Us. So. Know, I, never know. Just... I, this weekend, I'm going to say it's a bit. I'm going to say it is a bit of a humdinger, and I'm going to say that Villa, but I'm going to say Villa do it. Uh, I don't quite know what scoreline, but I'm just daring to dream. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I probably should never do that as a bit fan. But uh, well, it's been absolutely brilliant to have you on. Um, where can people find you online and find your work? Uh, well, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, <laughs> at WillDalton01. That's where I live. So, yeah, plenty of football, sport-related stuff in there uh, from Ireland and from England as well. So, yeah, um, uh, and the world, really. So, yeah, that's where you can get me. 